Well, good morning, my friends. I hope the wind doesn't make the sound bad today. I left my little microphone in the car. Anyway, good morning. I'm coming to you from Apalachicola, Florida. Today I'm uh, attending my, my niece's wedding. Niece by love, not by blood, but I know her since she was born and uh, her parents and I have raised our kids together. So anyway, it's a beautiful day. We had a nice time last night at the rehearsal dinner and uh, it was quite, quite lovely. Anyway, so this is where I am today. And I come to you again with Robert Henderson's um, 365 prayers and activations for ending the courts of heaven. And uh, today's March 16th, 2024. It's a beautiful day. It's cloudy here, but it's a beautiful day. So uh, we're still talking about clothing. You know, we've been talking about clothing ourselves lately. And so he, he's been talking about that, right? So today the title is The Robes of Righteousness. And so uh, the, the, the first scripture he refers to and, and, and uh, writes out fully is from Isaiah 61 and 10. I mean, if you haven't read the book of Isaiah, if you haven't read 61, man, it's awesome. Anyway, it's all awesome, but you know what I'm saying. So this is what it reads. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. Praise the Lord. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. Thank you, Lord. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Praise God. Praise God. Seagulls are having a day of it there. So anyway, this is what Robert goes on to say today. As we receive the new clothing of garments, of salvation and robes of righteousness, we walk in great joy and rejoicing. The old has passed away and everything is now new. And that comes from 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. I encourage you to look up these scriptures, by the way. As we now stand in the spirit realm, freshly clothed with the nature of the Lord himself, we have great joy and life. We have life. God is so life-giving. We are also granted a new realm of authority to function in by virtue of the clothing that we're now wearing. Our clothing in the spirit realm determines the dimension of authority we carry and we function in. We were given power and authority by Jesus Christ himself. And this clothing is what testifies that we are righteous and that we therefore have the right to stand in, the, in this holy place called the courts of heaven. Righteousness is necessary for the right to stand and function before the Lord and his courts. If, if we're not, then I'm not talking about self-righteous. He's not talking about self-righteous, but righteousness. Like we don't have any authority there if we don't have righteousness. We are righteous by faith in who Jesus is and what he has done. And that is referenced in Romans 4 and 3. Our faith in Jesus and his atoning work in our behalf on the cross is what deems us righteous. His atoning work on the cross. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you, God. However, from the new birth, when we're born again, that, that this produces... We now stand clothed as a new man, manifesting his righteousness from his nature that's in us. His nature is in us. I've said it so many times lately, like we're created in his image. That is like overwhelming. It's so hard to, so hard to like get, right? We're made in his image. The righteousness grants us, this righteousness grants us realms of authority to function from the courts of heaven to defend ourselves against the enemy, that he'll grab anything to hold against you in the courts. Any any openings, any openings that we allow in our lives that, that's not godly and that's not obedience to the Lord God. He, he has these things, they're not rules, but they're we're in obedience to him and we do what his word says, then it's for our own good, right? It's for our own good. You know, not having sex before marriage, you know, it causes soul ties, it causes soul ties. It harms us. It actually harms us. And that's why it's not a rule and regulation. It's like he wants good for us. Right. So, you know, getting drunk and drinking alcohol, 
Um, it just it impairs your brain. It's a spirit. If you drive by a liquor store, that's what finally got into me to just stop it. Um, drive by a liquor store, it says wines and spirits. I don't want any other spirit besides Holy Spirit and me. You know, that kind of thing, right? So if we impair our if we impair our mind, then we just lose the ability to fully receive everything he has for us, right? So, uh, so anyway, I won't preach. <laughs> Sorry. I just get kind of passionate about stuff like that because I've learned so much for myself, my own self. So this is Robert's prayer today. Lord, as I stand in your courts, I receive you. I receive from you the garments of salvation and the robe of righteousness. Thank you for all that your body and blood we have a blood covenant. Thank you for the blood covenant, Lord. The blood has provided for me. Thank you, Lord, that I am righteous before you, not because of my performance, but my faith in who you are and what you have done. I thank you, Lord, that my nature has now changed into your image. From this new nature, I express the righteousness of who you are into the earth. This, Lord, grants me authority to stand before you in your courts. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Amen. So, my goodness. Uh, my prayer today would be, Lord, uh, Lord, I, I desire to be righteous in your sight. God, I desire to to actually reflect your image in my life, Lord. Show me, show me your ways, God. When my thoughts aren't your thoughts, God, do not let words come out of my mouth that aren't from you, God. Filter everything and take every thought captive, God. Clothe us, God, clothe us with the righteousness and help us remain clothed and never take off the armor of God, as Ephesians 6 says. You clothe yourself with the armor of God, you never take it off, you leave it on. And I thank you, Lord, that's possible, God. And you've given us power and authority, God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the truth, God. We have so much. How many salvation, breastplate of righteousness, God. We have those things. You've given them to us because we've received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and follow him. So I thank you for this day, God. I pray, God, that you would just uh, that do a work in me today that was more than yesterday. And um, at the wedding I'm going to, Lord, too, I just pray that your love just, just shows in me in, in any way that anybody might need it, God. And uh, I thank you for this day, God. I love you so much. I trust you. You're trustworthy. You are so worthy. You are holy and only you are holy. Bless you, Lord. Bless every single person that hears this. Here's your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. So I do pray that you're blessed today. I am definitely blessed today. I am blessed every day, no matter what's going on. I've been really sick lately, but now I'm well the last couple of days. Uh, I've got some things going on that need healing, and the Lord's gonna heal it. But I have not lost my joy, and I am not taking my smile off my face. Somebody told me last night at the rehearsal dinner that I have a great smile. And I've been talking about smiles a lot lately. If you're smiling, it's really hard to be mad at somebody or, or have strife going on right? Or unforgiveness. If you're smiling, you have love in you. If it's a real smile, right? If it's a real smile. So, um, I talked to somebody last night about smiles and she said, uh, she said, well, yeah, when I'm on, I'm on the phone with somebody that's giving me a really hard time or anything, I just smile, but it's like, it's grit, It's a gritting of teeth and smiling, but that's not the kind of smile I'm talking about. I'm talking about the smile that comes from your heart. In fact, the Lord has given me this thing. It's most awesome that when I see somebody and I see their smile, if it's rich in love, I see like down into their heart right away, boom. And I tell people now that, I say, I love your smile. And you know what? The Lord lets me see into your heart and that's why I love your smile so much because your heart is good. And so people get blessed by that. I just, it's time for us to say things that we're thinking about people when we see people, not bad things, nothing critical, no critical judgments, but you hold those back and you ask the Lord, it's Lord's judgment on people, okay? Not us, it's not our job for that. But when you see something pleasant, you see something that's dressed pretty and it looks really beautiful, you say to them, oh, you look really nice today, I love that outfit, or anything, anything to encourage, to lift up, even if it's a stranger, especially if it's a stranger, right? Anyway, I'm gonna stop. It's kind of like preaching again, sorry. I love you, but you know, he loves you so much more. <laughs>